All right, so fermentation, a wonderful chemical process, one of my favorite topics to talk about. Um, this is just so much cool stuff about it, and like even why it exists is pretty cool. Let's start off, and, and hopefully you guys have watched the videos over like the basics of metabolism, the basics of glycolysis. I'm gonna go over just a little bit of that again. So, uh, what is fermentation? So, fermentation is an anaerobic process. All right. So, I'm gonna. It's important. So I'm gonna underline it. Uh, by which cells can turn chemical energy. Uh, like glucose or other sugars into ATP using an endogenous electron acceptor. Endogenous means that it's internal or part of the cell. That is a lot of words that you may or may not know. So let's back off a bit, see what they each mean. So anaerobic means that it doesn't require oxygen. Why is that important? What does oxygen do? So in aerobic respiration, um, oxygen acts as an electron sponge. So and this is like, this is key. You want to know this. This will be on the test, so pay attention, All right? Uh, in aerobic respiration, you start off with a glucose, and I'm going to go into this more in the next video. All right? And at the end uh, of glycolysis and the citric acid cycle, what you will have turned it into is a whole bunch of CO2. All of the carbons on the sugar will have turned into CO2. So that's, oops. So all of the carbons on the sugar will have turned into CO2, and you will end up with a bunch of NADH, and then The electrons are going to come off of NADH and they're going to go through something called the electron transport chain where they're going to bounce back and forth and eventually end up on oxygen. The oxygen will turn into water And the NADH will turn back into NAD plus. And this NAD plus goes back over here where it can combine, where it can absorb the electrons from more uh, glucose. So all the elect all the oxygen is doing is it's taking the electrons away. It's not adding any energy in. It's not like um, making the ATP. All that happens is that these electrons have to end up somewhere. And oxygen has the property that it's really, really good at absorbing electrons. That's why we call the process of taking electrons from something oxidation. It's something that oxygen is really good at. So if the oxygen 
absorbs the electrons, turns into water, and then the water can just like float out of the set because it's water. Water does that. Um, what if you are not doing uh, aerobic respiration? What would happen? Well, you would start off with your glucose, right? You would take a bunch of electrons from your glucose. You would stash them on NAD+, which is going to turn into a bunch of NADH. And then, well, you would, you, you could take your NADH and like run it through the electron transport chain, but there's nothing to take them away. And so then your electron transport chain is going to get backed up and backed up and backed up backed up think of like a freeway where there's no off ramps all of the off ramps are closed now you guys have probably been on a freeway where like one off ramp is closed right and what happens then traffic backs up right, now imagine all the off ramps are closed what's going to happen to traffic is going to back all the way up is anyone going to be able to get on that freeway no so Eventually, and by eventually I mean really, really quickly, what happens is that all of this is like backed up, backed up, backed up, backed up, because these electrons can't leave to go anywhere. And now the NADH can't let go of its electrons. And without the NADH letting go of its electrons, you can't make more NAD+. And if you can't make more NAD+, then guess what? Well, now you can't take the electrons away from glucose because you don't have anywhere to put them. And remember what the other thing that was made? ATP. And so if you don't have oxygen to take away the electrons, the whole thing backs up, backs up, backs up. You can't make uh, uh, NAD+. If you can't regenerate your NAD+, then you can't break down glucose, which means you can't make ATP. And so if you die of asphyxiation, if you don't have oxygen, that's what's happening, is your entire system is backing up like a freeway with no exit ramps and then no new cars can come on, which means that the whole city stops working. Now, what does this have to do with fermentation? Well, in fermentation, uh, you don't have oxygen. So in fermentation, where do the electrons go? If nothing takes the electrons away, the system can't work. It very quickly backs up. You run out of NAD+, you can no longer break down glucose, even through fermentation, even through glycolysis. And so we've got to have something that's going to take those electrons away. So in fermentation, you are taking a glucose, taking the electrons, sticking them on NADH, and generating a tiny amount of ATP in the process. Now what you'd really like to do if you're an aerobic organism is take that NADH and run it through the electron transport chain uh, where you're gonna generate a whole bunch of ATP, and that's going to uh, a you know, be really, really good for you, but it requires having oxygen or something else at the end to take the electrons away. With fermentation, you don't have that. You're not doing any sort of respiration. You don't have anything from outside the cell, like an oxygen that comes in from outside the cell, or some organisms use things other than oxygen, but it's always gonna be something that came on from outside of the cell uh, uh, that you've got to stick the electrons onto. Well, now what you've got to do is you've got to stick the electrons on something you just made. 
something that you made in the same proportion that you made in ADH. Well, what else do you make when you do glycolysis? Well, if you're doing EMP glycolysis, and most things are, you're making two pyruvates and you're making two NADHs. Now, you're not doing respiration, so there's no point in breaking down these pyruvates any further. There's still a lot of energy left on them, but it's not energy that you can use because you're not getting any oxygen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these NADHs and we're like, all right, we've got this energy, we've got these electrons on these NADHs. It would be really awesome if we could use that, but we can't because we're not doing respiration, so we can't tap into electron energy. We gotta get rid of these electrons somehow. Right now, they're just burning a hole in our pocket and boom, we're gonna take those electrons and we're going to put them back onto the pyruvate. We're going to reduce the pyruvate into another chemical. And depending upon like how and where you stick the electrons back in the pyruvate, you get different products. But now this NADH, or NAD+, I should say, this can go back to glycolysis. So now we have an exit ramp on our freeway. Is it the best exit ramp? No. It kind of takes you to a crappy part of town, not a great place where you want to end up, but at least now traffic can flow. Because the electrons are going somewhere. So where do they go? We know that we're gonna put them onto the pyruvate, but what then does the pyruvate become? Well, there's a few different options. Um, and depending upon which option you take, you're doing a different type of fermentation that produces a different product. So where do we see fermentation being used? All right, well, first thing everyone probably thinks of is beer and other alcoholic beverages. Uh, in, in making beer or wine or uh, mead or whatever, you're performing something called alcohol fermentation. In alcohol fermentation, uh, the glucose is broken down into two pyruvates, and then the pyruvates are broken down into carbon dioxide and acetaldehyde. Remember, pyruvate is a three carbon sugar. So one of the carbons is going to leave as carbon dioxide and the other two become acetaldehyde. And then you add the electrons from NADH to acetaldehyde and that turns it into ethanol. Depending on the type of beverage that you're making, if you're making beer or champagne or another sparkly beverage, then the carbon dioxide becomes dissolved in the thing that you're making, and that's why it has bubbles. If you're making something flat, like you know a traditional wine, you allow the carbon dioxide to bubble away. And actually, you allow most of the carbon dioxide to bubble away in any case. If you try to capture it all, um, you're tank would explode uh, because of all of the carbon dioxide that is produced. It's producing a fair amount of carbon dioxide. One for every, uh, actually two for every glucose that you use. So here we have alcohol fermentation. You have NADH. You have your pyruvate. You transfer your electrons. You lose a carbon as CO2, and the rest is alcohol. And since alcohol is fairly uh, it, uh, hydrophobic, it can just diffuse out of the cell and carry itself away. Um, and 
yeah, an important thing about this process is that it is irreversible, right? Because you've made the CO2, the CO2 is gonna bubble away, right? There's no way to put the CO2 back on. So this is an irreversible process, but it carries the electrons away. Another place that you see fermentation is cheese and yogurt and um, certain pickles, kimchi, things like that. Uh, and this usually involves a different type of fermentation called lactic acid fermentation. In lactic acid fermentation, this is more commonly done by bacteria rather than yeast. Uh, you're going to break down lactose or another sugar into pyruvate, again, because that's what you do in glycolysis. And then you use the NADH to directly give its electrons to pyruvate. So instead of removing a carbon from the pyruvate first, you're directly giving it to pyruvate, and that's going to turn it into lactic acid. Right? This lactic acid is going to be what gives a cheese and yogurt their sharp taste. That's an acid taste. Uh, in some organisms, um, instead of making lactic acid, they might make acetic acid. And uh, in which case they're, they're going to be making something like a vinegar or a kimchi, or not a kimchi, uh, a kombucha or something like that. Um, but you're going to be making some type of acid. And also in you, right? You are obviously an aerobic organism. Without oxygen, you die. But sometimes your muscles need energy faster than your lungs and heart can deliver it. If you've taken anatomy and physiology, you're already pretty familiar with this process. Or if you've just ever run or lifted weights or something like that, your muscles can, you, can output an enormous amount of power if they have enough energy. Now, some of your muscles your endurance muscles can only make energy as fast as oxygen can be gotten to them. But other of your muscles, your strength muscles, can actually uh, use AT or use stores of glucose through fermentation, lactic acid fermentation, to generate extra ATP so that they can output more force, even though they're not getting enough oxygen but it's not permanent, right? You will eventually run out of sugar fairly quickly, actually, in about uh, um, less than a minute, you know, like 40 to a minute 20, depending upon how much training you've done. Um, and your muscles ferment sugar into lactic acid, but eventually what you have to do is take that lactic acid and turn it back into sugar. Otherwise it will build up in your body and this is part of what causes that muscle burn sensation is the buildup of acid in your muscles. And so an important thing about lactic acid fermentation is that it's reversible. Like this is one good, this is a very, very good reason why you do lactic acid fermentation rather than alcohol fermentation. Like the other reason is like, it would be kind of stupid if, uh, you know, when you're like, you know, running away from a bear, your muscles are turning out lots of alcohol and then you get drunk and fall down and get eaten by the bear. That's not very good. But like more importantly, um, you need to be able to reverse this process. So you take NADH, you take your pyruvate, you take the electrons, you add them to the pyruvate, it becomes lactic acid. And then later on, when you're not running away from a bear anymore and you're sitting there going, <sighs> this is one of the reasons why you continue to breathe hard after exercising is because you now need oxygen to relieve that debt that you've built up. And you can now take this lactic acid, turn it back into pyruvate, and stick the electrons back on NADH. Now you can take your NADH and your pyruvate 
plus that oxygen that you're now huffing, uh, despite the fact that you're not running away anymore, and then you can run all of that through the normal electron transport chain and citric acid cycle that you do. Now these are the two main types of fermentation that I want you guys to know. Alcohol fermentation and lactic acid fermentation. There's actually a whole bunch of different types of fermentation that bacteria can do. Uh, and they produce different products that have different functions. So like lactic acid is a big one. Um, alcohol is a big one. Uh, so acetate, this is acetic acid fermentation. That's what makes vinegar and kombucha. Um, proponiate or pro, uh, pro, proponiate, um, propanoic acid. Uh, is uh, a product. This is actually the product that gives Swiss cheese its distinctive taste. Uh, and it's done by certain bacteria that are used in making Swiss cheese. Um, so down here, we have ethanol, obviously. Uh, N-propanol and... Uh, butanol, these are used in various um, uh, drug manufacturing and industrial processes. And this is only a small portion of the products that can be made by bacterial fermentation. So there's lots of different ones that can be made. The two main ones I want you to know are lactic acid or lactate and ethanol.